Hello from Chitna. We are going to take you around and do a little tour today. Uh, there's a few little stores, grocery store, some things to see in the town. We thought we'd go have a look. Now we're gonna go see how everybody did fishing today. Well, this just got our attention. All the way out there on those uh, mountains, there's snow. Fresh snow. Yeah, fresh snow. It's like the middle of June and there's fresh snow up there. This is a screwy summer. We're down here at O'Brien Creek and strategically parked to get out of the wind so I can uh, give you guys a little bit of audio. Here is the uh, stretch where pretty much anybody with a vehicle can drive down to and fish right from the beach. Uh, right now there are no eddies and we'll explain later but there's uh, pretty much eddy fishing and drift fishing and these guys since there's no eddies to swirl the water around in are uh, kind of doing this little drift fishing thing. Well they're not really doing anything right now. No, they look really tired to me. Yeah, this type of uh, fishing is really exhausting. So essentially, you put your net in upriver, and the current just kind of pushes it on down. And hopefully when the a fish, fish swims in. yeah, hopefully a fish swims in. But when the fishing's hot, it's very effective. But we like to do the eddy method, which is you find a swirling part of water, and you just hold your net there, and it keeps the bag open. So there's not much going on right now. So the reason why we're not fishing right now and you know, just taking every single moment we can to uh, catch fish is because as soon as we catch our fish, we're gonna like hit the road and head back home to Seward so we can get them processed. And if we just get two fish here, three there, two there, you know, that's gonna be a pain in the ass to handle because you wanna keep that fish fresh because once it's been harvested, it has a shelf life. So we're crossing our fingers that we are able to uh, have enough water and conserve our water in the motorhome well enough to uh, be able to stick it out for when the uh, big push of fish come through. And when that big push of fish comes through, it is fascinating. There's fish and blood and nets flying everywhere. It is like definitely a sight to be seen. So hopefully we'll be able to uh, share some really hot fishing with you guys. Since we're here for an undefined amount of time, until the fish show up actually, we need to conserve water. And one of our water conservation techniques is find a local water source. Obviously if you're in the desert, this is not really applicable, unless you're near a lake or a reservoir. But for us, we just go to a little creek, fill up our water jugs, and we'll use this to flush the toilets. Uh, we use it for dishes. We use it for uh, bathing. We'll just like pour it in a pot and heat it up. So make sure uh, 40 gallons of water in that tank lasts a lot longer. Looks like $3.28 a gallon. The only option in town. We are here at the Chitna Wayside. It's a pavilion with some interpretive signs, pretty much sharing information about Chitna and Wrangell St. Elias National Park, which is the largest national park, and some history about the Copper River Northwestern Railway. Something that caught my eye on this one is that they were thinking that Chitna would be a hub for the railway if they were to extend it to the Yukon. But in 1914, they decided to go through Seward, which is where we live. Something you don't want to miss when you come to various parts of Alaska is taking in the cultural history. 
Right now we're in the land of the Atna and it's an amazing interpretive sign explaining how they've been able to utilize the uh, salmon from the Copper River here and also how they were able to utilize the uh, copper that came out of the mountains long before uh, the mine companies found it. Well, we're pretty well done here in Chitna. It's kind of small. What we'll do now is take you across the river and go have a look at a type of fi subsistence fishing reserved for the native folks in this area. As always in Alaska, that was an interesting ride across the river. Yeah, we had to uh, look and wait for somebody to come through so we could see which path to take. Yeah, people that already knew how to get over here. But uh, we made it, and now we're going to show you the fish wheels. So these little devices are called fish wheels, and they operate off the most basic form of hydrodynamics. It just keeps spinning in the current. Fish swim into there. And then they fall right on out and into that chute right down there. And the fish wheels are lined up all along this bank of the river. I know it's a bit windy out here, but you can see some red salmon swimming around in there. So this is the water crossing we were a little unsure about, but watched a couple of other people come across with their ATVs and figured out which way to go. All right, we're going through. Heading back. to have a look around the local store here in Chitna. Uh, this one is owned by the Native Corporation here in town and it's called the Wrangell View Store. They also have an RV park up the road that you can stay in that has full hookups and sometimes we do that if it's pretty hot we will need to plug into electric so we can run the AC for the dogs when we go dip netting. This year it's chilly if you can't tell so we're not having to do that and we're parking and free camping down this O'Brien Creek Road. When we mention Native Corporation, it occurs to us that you may be wondering what that is. And basically we have organizations in Alaska that have um, uh, the ability to own stores, own businesses, and they then... Big businesses too. Big businesses. Like and freight and shipping companies. Exactly. Uh, construction companies. Massive, all large kinds businesses. Of transportation companies. Um, and uh, basically, they t just like the uh, Indian reservations in the lower 48, up here, the native corporations take in the monies that they earn from these businesses and share them as dividends with their tribal members. So that's what this store is and other things around that you'll see that are owned by native corporations. This is a way that they're able to provide money back to their people. As an aside, they also tend to provide clinics and health care and other services for their native communities and native population through their native corporations. Well, let's go inside and see how much a gallon of milk costs. Let's do. A gallon of milk, $6.25, still more than cost of gasoline. Inside this store, you will find just about everything you need. You may not find organic, but you will find what you need. There's a pretty good selection of just about everything. All right, the last thing we've got to grab, can't forget it. 10 pound bag of ice. It's actually not that bad. 
five dollars for a ten pound bag and in Anchorage it's usually like three dollars for seven pounds so not bad it's not horrible look at this house if we ever bought a cabin the Wrangell St. Elias Park area is where I would go for one it is so beautiful out there this is about the only store with uh, gifts and knickknacks and stuff like that here in Chitna. So we're gonna go inside and see what's in there this year. Uh, we came in and had a look around at this lovely little shop here in Chitna and we decided to do another one of our giveaways while we're here. So they have a soap. It's Copper Basin Creations. We picked out a flavor for boy and a flavor for a girl. And uh, if you are able to answer the question that we're about to pop up on the screen, uh, be the first one to answer in the comments below. These will be yours. This one is Mountains and Valleys. Is that for the girls or the boys? This is for the girls. This one is called The Woodsman. I'll let you guess, but it's for the boys. Okay guys, there's a moose that we saw swimming across the lake here. There she is. Okay, here's a better look at her. Stick your head up, lady. There you are. How you doing down there? Yeah. Everybody enjoys swimming. How you doing, ma'am? Well, that got us out of the house for a few hours and a little fresh air. Hope you enjoyed it. I know that Ben and I really enjoyed making this video because we think that the lifestyle and the culture of Alaska is really special and unique and being able to share a little taste of that with you guys today uh, was very rewarding for us. Uh, the idea that people come down and dip net and subsist, uh, do subsistence fishing, um, and being in little communities like this is very Alaskan, and, uh, and we love to be able to share it with you. So, hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed making it. And there goes a four-wheeler. <laughs> um, the other thing, speaking of four-wheelers, now that we've driven around this little community with you, kind of see why we can get away with not having a toad, but having an ATV in Alaska instead. You can kind of get wherever you want to go, and especially on those places where a little car might not suffice. It wouldn't suffice. Yeah. So, uh, hope you have a great day. Hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, share with your friends, but above all, enjoy the ride.